Hey, hey, and welcome back to part two of putting it all together, which are the fundamentals for permanently resolving your chronic acne. In part one, we covered diet, hydration, exercise, sleep, and a lot more, so if you haven't seen that, take a step back, watch that one, and then come back here. If you've already watched that, then we're all ready. We'll dive right in. So, supplements. If you're suffering from acne, I recommend taking some probiotics. I've made a couple of videos on the benefits of probiotic supplementation, so if you have questions about the hows or whys, feel free to watch those. Long story short, probiotics help your gut stay healthy. But remember that more important than probiotic supplementation is making sure that you're eating enough prebiotics, aka fiber, that will feed those beneficial bacteria. Check out my 10 best foods for healing acne video for some suggestions. One supplement that I don't think even counts as a supplement is the spice turmeric. The hype about turmeric is real. Taking turmeric once a day made a huge difference in the overall health of my skin and my predisposition to breakouts. Bonus points if you take a ginger turmeric black pepper mix as they work with each other synergistically. I'm lucky enough that I live in a climate where I can grow my own fresh turmeric in my yard, but you can find fresh turmeric root in most Asian grocery stores. Alternately, the dried powdered turmeric works just as well. A quarter teaspoon a day is the current recommended dose. You can mix it into a smoothie, into water, or even pack the powder into a vegetarian vitamin capsule. I prefer to grate up my fresh turmeric and put it into my morning smoothie or on top of a fruit bowl where it becomes evenly distributed and it doesn't have like a strong bitter turmeric -y taste. Yay! There are turmeric slash curcumin supplements on the market, but I honestly advise against this as research indicates that they're not as effective as actually just taking turmeric. Whole foods just work together in beautiful synergy, and that's what makes it magic. It can't be replicated by supplements. Another important nutrient involved in skin health are essential fatty acids. Make sure you're getting enough of the essential stuff without piling on the extra grease. I believe we talked about it briefly earlier, but hey, repetition is how we learn, right? So high omega-3 precursor foods like flax, hemp, and chia seeds, and dark leafy green vegetables will give your bodies the EFA precursors it needs. Fish oil supplements are like modern snake oil. The claims they make are suspect at best, they can be contaminated with environmental toxins, and new studies indicate that they actually increase your risk of cardiac death, possibly because omega-3 oils are extremely volatile and prone to oxidation during processing, rendering them rancid. And rancid fats are potent oxidants, which means they cause inflammation. So your best bet is to eat omega-3 precursor rich plant foods and let your body do the converting it needs. If you're still nervous about getting enough essential fatty acids on a plant-based diet, you can opt for an algae-based DHA supplement that is processed under nitrogen conditions to prevent oxidation. In general, I highly recommend against isolated nutrient supplements because they are generally ineffective when compared to nutrients from whole foods, and in an alarming trend, isolated nutrient supplements can turn out to be kind of deadly. What I prefer to do is acknowledge a potential nutrition gap and do my best to fill that using nutrients from whole plant foods. However, there have been some reports where supplements have made a big impact on acne. One such instance is with the mineral zinc. I haven't personally benefited from zinc supplementation, but there have been accounts where persistent acne breakouts resolved after zinc supplementation. I recommend making other dietary and lifestyle changes first, addressing potential food sensitivities, and making a point of it to include zinc-rich plant foods like pumpkin seeds in your regular diet. Also, be aware that many whole grains and legumes, in addition to being high in minerals like zinc and iron, contain phytates, i.e. phytic acid, which can bind with and block the absorption of some minerals like calcium, iron, and zinc. Pre-soaking or pre-sprouting beans and whole grains can help to reduce phytate activity and increase mineral absorption. But if you've made all these changes and you haven't seen a difference in acne, there might be something genetic going on. You never know. So you can try a low-dose zinc supplement, but keep in mind that you won't need to take it forever, and it's very wise not to supplement with minerals for long periods of time, as they can and do 
build up in your body. If you do decide to supplement with zinc, look for a supplement with zinc picolinate as the source. Selenium is another mineral that's been shown to be helpful with acne in some cases, but as with zinc, you can give it a try for a while, but long-term supplementation isn't necessarily smart or necessary. More than isolated nutrient supplements, I recommend trying herbal supplements. Certain plants can have significant impacts on our detoxification and hormonal systems. I can give you some guidelines here, but I really must insist that you work with a proficient herbalist or perhaps even better, a practitioner of Chinese medicine. Herbs are mostly innocuous, but self-diagnosing and treatment can get screwed up really fast. So if you want to get more into herbal supplementation or take more than one herbal supplement at once, please seek out a qualified professional and no, the shop person at your local health food store doesn't count. Some herbs that have been shown to be supportive of detoxification include dandelion, calendula, milk thistle, and goosegrass, as well as many others. It's usually pretty safe to use these herbs on your own, um, as long as you're not on diuretics or dealing with any kind of kidney disease or liver disease. But again, never hurts to consult with a professional. There are also herbs like chast tree berry, aka Vitex, that have significant impacts on hormonal functioning. But again, I highly recommend using these types of herbs under the guidance of a professional and only after other lifestyle changes have been tried, including like taking flaxseed or eating soy and other phytoestrogen rich foods. Because these herbs can be very powerful and it's very possible to throw your hormones further out of balance. There are also many herbs like golden seal and echinacea that serve to improve immunity and help your body fight acute infection. But again, long-term use is often contraindicated, so work with a professional. Traditional Chinese medicine has some pretty cool tricks up its sleeves, and I've had really good luck with taking traditional Chinese medicine formulas during phases of acute breakouts or inflammation. My acupuncturist helps me manage what formulas I need to take and when, and I generally trust her judgment for the most part because she can get a little bit overzealous. Which brings me to another disclaimer. As awesome as professional herbalists and traditional Chinese medicine practitioners are, if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. If they start trying to sell you dozens of formulas and treatments, or they tell you something like pork is good for your gallbladder, get suspicious and use your judgment as to whether or not they're completely inept and or trying to milk you for cash. One option for taking herbs is tea. I prefer herbal teas since I'm sensitive to caffeine, but occasionally I enjoy green or white teas as well. The antioxidant and cleansing properties of many teas honestly cannot be beat. And as bonus, you stay hydrated. Also in regards to supplements, many people break out in response to certain supplements, especially iodine, biotin, and B12. Since the only important supplement on that list, in my opinion, is B12, not taking the others is generally just fine. For people sensitive to B12, either taking a microdose or trying different forms of B12 can help. Iodine in excess of 100 to 150 micrograms per day, which is really easy to do through diet alone, especially if you're eating seaweed or, God forbid, seafood. Don't do it. That can definitely trigger breakouts. Biotin in multivitamins has also been implicated. All the more reason not to take isolated nutrient supplements. All right, so aside from supplements, there's another aspect of acne treatment that bothers me even more because there's very little that you can smear on your face without upsetting the pH and causing more breakouts. After a lot of painful, frustrating, expensive trial and error, I've taken my skincare routine to the bare minimum, and I don't seem to be able to stray without consequence. There's no magical topical acne treatment, but a few things might help when you do have a breakout here and there, such as sea salt. If it's a really strong solution or straight up salt, it definitely doesn't feel nice, but salt is antibacterial and a little bit of salt or saline can help to alleviate a little bit of the infection that's associated with a breakout. 
Ice cubes can also be really helpful for restricting the blood vessels around your breakout, which reduces inflammation. It can also slow the growth of the bacteria, which can help your immune system get a little bit of a jump on healing up the breakout. Interestingly enough, your own spit can work, which sounds gross, I know, but hear me out. Your own saliva is kind of awesome for healing your skin. Your spit also has a different bacteria profile than a pimple, and the theory is that the bacteria in your spit can somehow inhibit or edge out the bacteria going in your breakout. It sounds far out, and maybe it is, but I've done this for years and it actually seems to work. It's certainly not a cure, but it can definitely help and it seems to speed up healing. I found that a mixture of baking soda with just like a tiny little bit of water is a really inconsistently effective spot treatment. And I do say spot treatment. Do not smear this all over your face. Baking soda is highly alkaline and the surface of your skin needs to be slightly acidic to impede bacteria growth. So seriously, do not go overboard. Bentonite clay and charcoal masks can be effective in speeding up detoxification. A lot of people have reported excellent benefit from using clays, but I've never personally benefited from mud or clay masks. They always seem to either come pre-mixed with some kind of oil and or cause a more drying, which causes more imbalance and then triggers a breakout the next week. There are a lot of other ideas around the same premise, like apple cider vinegar, evening primrose oil, tea tree oil, raspberry leaf oil, eucalyptus oil, turmeric essential oil, and turmeric powder masks. I mean, my goodness, the list of what people put on their faces is unending. No miracles yet. Probably because the cause of acne isn't topical, so the solution isn't either. A big issue that affects acne is stress. Your emotional state affects your hormones in a big way. That means what you think and feel will physically change who you are. That's pretty cool. And if you're a chronic freaker outer, like me, a terrifying reason to freak out more. I know I've been told a million times to just like calm the hell down and not take everything so seriously. And I resent every single person who has ever said that to me because they seriously don't get it. But they're kind of right. Life should be relatively pleasant or there's honestly no point being alive. Control what you can. Choose a career you enjoy, spend time with nice people, show those around you love, appreciation, and affection, take deep breaths, smile a lot, cuddle doggies, try yoga, enjoy silence, eat good food, do what brings you peace, and your skin and your overall health will thank you. And now for the hippie woo-woo stuff. Some people claim that your body is making your face break out because you don't want to be seen, or because your subconscious wants to sabotage your success, or you don't feel worthy of happiness or beauty or admiration. I'm not saying figuring all that out and clearing blockages will cure you of your chronic acne, but it sure is something to think about, isn't it? Especially when those kinds of feelings affect our feelings of self-worth and our abilities to take care of ourselves so profoundly. All right, so I assume that you might be staring at the screen, eyes wide, in shock from the sheer amount of recommendations that I have just made. And I feel good about that because what's the point of beating around the bush or hawking sponsored products that don't work? If you're not entirely comatose, please don't forget to push the little thumbs up button at the bottom of the screen and subscribe if you want more videos that are about the reality of what it takes to be healthy. Until next time, make better choices for yourself and your skin and take really, really good care. I will see you next time.